Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today I'm taking a break from benchmarking to bring you what I think is going to be quite an interesting comparison. As some of you are probably aware, I'm currently working on a big GPU update that compares all the current generation AMD and Nvidia GPUs in one big free-for-all. Uh, along the way, it occurred to me that I already had the data in for the 4GB 480, the 8GB 480, as well as the 6GB 1060 and 3GB 1060. So I thought, why not hit the pause button and take a good look at how these four models stack up in late 2016. After all, it could be a good time to pick yourself up a cheeky Christmas present, and well, I'm happy to help with that. The last time we made this kind of comparison, or at least compared the 8GB 480 and 6GB 1060 cards, the GeForce card was found to be on average 12% faster across the 25 games that we tested. As expected, the low-level API results were closer, but with the vast majority of games still using DirectX 11, Nvidia seemed to have an advantage. Not willing to just accept that, AMD has been working their backsides off, and their recent Crimson Relive driver update is evidence of this. Not only is their driver support improved, but so too of the number of titles that they have, well, how should I say this, crest to market? Games such as Titanfall 2 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, for example. These games work a treat on AMD hardware, while the big blockbuster title that is Battlefield 1 also enjoys a bit of Radeon action. All three games, plus many more, weren't available back when we first tested the RX 480 and GTX 1060. Now that they are, I thought why not stick to 2016 titles for this comparison. We pretty much know at this point how these cards get on in 2015 titles, or at least we should anyway, I've only benchmarked them half a dozen times or so over the past five months. So in summary, I've got both versions of each graphics card, the 3 and 6 GB 1060 and the 4 and 8 GB 480. I also have the latest drivers from each camp and a whole squad of 2016 AAA titles. So that right there is the makings of a great benchmark session. In total, there'll be roughly 500 benchmark runs completed at the 1080p and 1440p resolutions on our overclocked Core i7 test system. I'm going to focus mostly on the 1080p results for this comparison and just gloss over the 1440p numbers when we're looking at the individual games. Basically, I've done that so you're not still here tomorrow watching this video. That said, I will cover both 1080p and 1440p results in detail in the conclusion in some big graphs that look at all the games side by side so you get a quick sense of what's going on. Anyway, without further ado, let's get to the benchmarks. So, rewinding all the way back to January, we find one of the most graphically impressive games of 2016, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Gamers spent hours enjoying the swimming animation in this one, and at 1080p all four of these graphics cards provided very smooth motion. This is an NVIDIA supported title, so the results aren't terribly surprising. The GTX 1060 3GB led the 8GB RX 480 by a slim margin. It was of course the 6GB 1060 that was king here. Jumping to 1440p, we're still able to average around 60 FPS on all cards, and here the 8GB 480 hops ahead of the 3GB 1060. Meanwhile, the 3GB 1060 and 4GB 480 both averaged 58 FPS with the same 34 FPS minimum. The game where sticks and stones will actually break your bones was released back in March, and it's another visual bonanza. With the HD texture pack enabled, the 3GB 1060 makes out surprisingly well matching the 8GB RX 480. Now at 1440p we see very similar performance across the board, and again the 8GB RX 460 just manages to outclass the GTX 1060. The Division was also released back in March, March 8th in fact, but it only had the legs to remain fun until the end of March. Those still playing it have to be caught in some kind of Groundhog Day situation. AMD and Nvidia trade blows here, the 6GB 1060 provided the best minimum frame rate result, though the 8GB RX 480 edged ahead for the average frame rate. The 3GB 1060 did drop a bit off the pace, though still managed a very respectable 60fps average. Jumping to 1440p, the margins are similar, though this time the 4GB RX 480 and 6GB 1060 are trading blows. 
Hitman, another title released in March, and I'm not sure what else to say about this one. I didn't really like the game that much, so I've actually spent more time benchmarking it rather than actually playing. Anyway, it's an AMD special. Radeons run around 4 FPS faster using DirectX 12, while the GeForce cards run about 4 FPS slower. So, in an effort to keep things fair, especially since this game doesn't really require DirectX 12 support, at least not in the way that a game such as Ashes does, for example, I have tested AMD cards using DirectX 12 and Nvidia cards using DirectX 11. The 6GB 1060 wasn't that far behind for the minimum frame rate, but it does get a little trampled when comparing the averages. Meanwhile, the 3GB version quietly slips out the back door claiming there's nothing to see here. Moving to 1440p, the performance trends remain pretty much the same, and again AMD still leads the way here. Quantum Break was first released as Quantum Broken on the Windows Store in April, but was later fixed as a DirectX 11 only title for Steam in September. This is when I started benchmarking with the game. Unfortunately there's no DirectX 12 support for AMD cards on the Steam platform. This could possibly help even things up here. As it stands, Nvidia's 1060 series runs away with it, scoring a rather easy win. The same is seen at 1440p, and even the 3GB 1060 is able to hand the 8GB RX480 a rather hefty defeat. Overwatch is updated more regularly with new characters and maps than the guys playing it change their underwear. That is to say that it's somewhat addictive and Blizzard has been heavily invested in the title. Helping along the craze is the fact that the game would play on an abacus. Here we see that with the Ultra preset enabled, the GTX 1060 hums along at 1080p to the tune of 176 FPS, never dipping below 138 FPS. The 8GB RX480 was a fair bit slower, though it did never dip below 116 FPS, meaning you probably won't notice. Even at 1440p, all graphics cards pushed well over 60 FPS at all times, and while the 8GB RX480 did just edge out the 3GB 1060's minimum result, it lost out when comparing averages. Doom was released in May, and at the time it was a big kick in the berries for AMD, as the then exclusive OpenGL support had the R9 390 rendering less frames than the GIMP to Hi Ho GTX 780 Ti. Here at Harbour Unbox, we do not believe that Nvidia GIMP their drivers is a big misunderstanding, I wish I never said anything. Bethesda and AMD finally made up in July, and it was good timing. The new incredible Vulcan performance allowed AMD to sweep some story about a PCIe power draw issue under the rug, and well, we all got on with our lives. Since then, it's been a one-sided beating in this title, but the GeForce cards are like, hey, we don't mind, we're still pushing over 100 FPS, go back and look at those quantum break numbers some more. Rather than do that, we'll just jump to the 1440p results for some more green pain. Granted, even here, all four graphics cards are pushing over 60 FPS at all times, those with high refresh monitors will appreciate what the RX4 series has to offer here. Ashes of the Singularity has pretty much run its course now, but AMD is in luck. The much more popular Total War Warhammer arrived in May. With DirectX 12 support that is still marked as beta despite working flawlessly, AMD are able to pull ahead in this one. The 8GB RX480 provides decent gains over the GTX 1060 6GB card. Moving to 1440p, the 6GB 1060 closes in on the 4GB RX480, and even the 3GB 1060 makes out quite well. Mirror's Edge Catalyst, which was released back in June, provides a close battle. Here the 3GB 1060 sits between the RX 480s, while the 6GB version pulls slightly ahead. Overall, Nvidia is a whisker faster here, but there really isn't much in it. We find much the same at 1440p. It's interesting to note how similar the 3GB and 6GB 1060 models are in terms of performance. If only the real F1s were this competitive. That said, I was surprised to find AMD coming out on top here, as the 8GB RX 480 beat out the GTX 1060 6GB by 5 FPS at 1080p. Interestingly, Nvidia were a bit more competitive at 1440p, and we see very similar minimum frame rates across all four graphics cards. By far the biggest release of August was Deus Ex Mankind Divided, though disappointingly the game wasn't released with DirectX 12 support. Anyway, DX12 support has now been patched in and it's even been updated a few times. Still, you can't really claim that DirectX 12 gives AMD an advantage in this title, since the Radeons still knock off the GeForce cards even when using DirectX 11. Given their performance is much the same under both APIs in this game, we've tested all cards using DirectX 12. Again, the 1060 was slower, but it wasn't exactly by a great margin. 
Moving to 1440p, the 6 gigabyte 1060 hangs in there with the 4 gigabyte 480, while the 3 gigabyte version claims not enough VRAM and starts a slideshow presentation about it. Battlefield 1 is another game where I've tested the AMD cards using DirectX 12 and the Nvidia cards using DirectX 11. Even with the new Relive driver, we still find that Nvidia is able to stay ahead here. The 6 gig 1060 outclassed the 8 gig 480, while the 3 gig 1060 matched the average frame rate of the 4 gig 480, while providing a slightly stronger minimum result. Jumping to 1440p, things even up quite a bit, and Nvidia's lead here is very slim indeed. It was great to see all four graphics cards averaging over 60 FPS at 1440p using the ultra quality settings. Mafia 3. Yeah, well, look, it's a 2016 title, and I didn't say I would only include well-coded games. Using the high-quality settings, none of these graphics cards are able to average 60 FPS at 1080p. The GTX 6GB was clearly the best option here, while the 3GB version beat the 4GB RX 480. Moving to 1440p, AMD closes the gap significantly, and now pretty much matches the GeForce cards. The only game that's been able to force me into the horrible Windows Store is Gears of War 4, and while I like the game, I also hate it for that. Anyway, given enough time, I'll probably get over it. Here we see the 6GB 1060 and 8GB 480 going head to head delivering the same 84 FPS. Meanwhile, the 4GB 480 is able to outdo the 3GB 1060. Jumping to 1440p, the 3GB1060 does fall further behind, while the 8GB480 and 6GB1060 both deliver similar performance once again. Those GCN-powered Titans run best on Radeon graphics cards, and here we see more evidence of that. Although the minimum frame rates were much the same, the RX 480 provided better average frame rate performance. That said, the margins close up at 1440p, at least when comparing the 6GB1060. Civilization 6 looks to be a title that favours the green team. The margins weren't drastic, but the 3 GB 1060 did outpace the 8 GB RX 480. Even at 1440p, we did find much the same story, so I have nothing else to add here. This latest Call of Duty title almost ensures that gamers will spend an infinite amount of time in the lobby trying to find a game, because everyone's playing Battlefield 1. Yep, Infinite Warfare has had a rough life, and it's just one month old. Despite the lack of players, it does seem to play rather well on PC. The GTX 1060 3GB is the slowest graphics card here, and it's still pushed over 60fps at all times with the quality settings maxed out. Still, it is the RX 480s that delivered the best result here, and the 4GB model can be seen rendering over 70fps at all times. Now at 1440p, the AMD cards pull further ahead. Both the 4GB and 8GB RX480 cards average over 60fps, while the 1060s fall short. Since our initial Dishonored 2 testing, the game's performance has been dramatically improved, particularly those minimum frame rates. At 1080p, Nvidia still looks to have the more consistent performance in this title. The 3GB 1060 is just able to edge out the 8GB 480 when comparing the average frame rate, while the minimum is much stronger. Jumping to 1440p, we find a similar story. The 1060 6GB leads the way, while the 3GB model is also able to beat both the 4GB and 8GB versions of the 480. Temporal filtering was first used to try and open black holes, but it was accidentally discovered along the way that enabling it in Watch Dogs 2 drastically improved performance, with no noticeable impact on image quality. To date, no one has told Ubisoft this, so they continue to leave it disabled in all their quality presets. For the purpose of our tests, I have gone ahead and enabled it manually, and now the GTX 1060 cards are able to reach and even exceed 60fps. This setting also gives the RX 480s an equally large performance boost, though as this is an Nvidia supported title, well, the results are as expected. Moving to 1440p, the 3GB 1060 hangs out with its RX 480 buddies, while the 6GB version pushes ahead with 49fps. The power figures aren't really going to change, and it doesn't make sense to benchmark the AMD cards using the new Radeon Chill feature, as it will make them look considerably slower than they actually are. At idle, the GeForce cards consumed around 10 watts less, and under load we see quite a large difference in Nvidia's favour. 
That said, the difference between a total system consumption of 215 watts and 280 watts is hardly a deal breaker or anything to really get worried about. So last time I made this comparison, it was a reasonably comfortable win for Nvidia and their GTX 1060. It was around 12% faster than the RX 480 when we compared the average data across something like 25 games. Still, not willing to go down without a fight, AMD has been working hard to develop their drivers and it looks like it's paid off. First up, let's compare the 6GB 1060 and 8GB 480 more closely. Here we see that on average the 1060 is now just 1% faster on average at 1080p, whereas previously we found it to be 12% faster. AMD has been able to reduce the margin in one of two ways. Firstly, they've been working hard on their driver support, evident by the recent Relive update. Secondly, and probably more importantly, there have been more AMD sponsored titles released later in the year. Moving to 1440p, we find the same 1% margin. One flippin' percent, guys. That's margin of error stuff, even with a three run average. It also means Nvidia pulled ahead in just a single extra title. Nvidia won 10 titles to AMD's nine titles. Had Nvidia not trounced AMD quite as hard in Quantum Break, that 1% could have very easily swung the other way. Anyway, the fact is, in today's games, these GPUs really are neck and neck. So, what about those rinky dinky $200 US MSRP cards, the 3GB 1060 and the 4GB 480? How do they compare? If only there was a way we could find out. Oh wait. Well, this is mighty convenient, isn't it? Again, AMD and Nvidia trade blows, though this time the RX 480 comes out on top, albeit by a rather small 2% margin at 1080p. Doom and Hitman are quite big hitters for AMD, while Quantum Break is again an Nvidia favourite. Moving to 1440p, the 3GB 1060 is now 4% slower. Hardly a pantsing, but the 4GB RX 480 does provide better numbers here for the most part. That said, margins were very close in the new and exciting titles such as Battlefield 1, Watch Dogs 2, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Titanfall 2. For those of you wondering, the GTX 1060 3GB averaged 53 FPS at 1440p, while the RX 480 4GB averaged 56 FPS. Keeping in mind the quality settings used, both seem like very capable 1440p gaming solutions. Also, as a side note, the power color Red Dragon version of the RX 480 4GB card that I have isn't factory overclocked. That said, I didn't really feel like this was an issue. The reason for this is because MSI's RX 480 Gaming X 8G card, which was used to represent the RX 480 8GB, only features a 3% factory core overclock while the memory goes unchanged. So at the very most, those results can only be inflated by up to 3%. The rest can be blamed on the fact that the 4GB cards run their GDDR5 memory 13% slower. Still, for the most part, the performance was very similar. Overall, the 8GB model was just 5% faster on average across the games tested. Now for that time in the video where I start feeling all that peer pressure, I don't know what to pick. Don't shoot the messenger, guys. Seriously, though, it really isn't for me to say which one of these cards you need to pick. It really comes down to nothing more than pricing in your region. Looking to Newegg for US shoppers, we find the 6GB 1060 selling for around $250 with a few nice options to pick from. The 8GB 480 is around $10 cheaper and there are some nice options from PowerColor, Gigabyte and MSI selling for $240. As we have said time and time again in the past with these close comparisons, you really could justify going either way, and there's certainly no wrong option here. Arguing over which one of these products you should buy is the very definition of a waste of time, and well, that's putting it nicely. Down under here in Australia, the choice is a bit more obvious. The cheapest 8GB RX 480 costs $380, while the 6GB 1060 can be picked up quite a bit cheaper at $350. Given the price difference, which admittedly is still very small, I would probably go with the 1060. But again, you could go either way, and I can't imagine anyone being disappointed with either option. Moving to the cheaper versions, we find the 3GB 1060 selling for around $200. While the 4GB 480 is much the same, though PowerColor and MSI are offering models at $190. Given that the 4GB 480 is slightly faster, this is probably the way I would go, and the MSI Armor model looks like a very nice option at $190.
Again, sadly, Aussies are paying much more for the 4GB 480 locally. Most are priced at around $340, while the 3GB 1060 cards are selling for $300, and there are even a few as low as $290. Again, as an Aussie shopper, this would push me towards the green team. That said, as I noted in my unboxing boxes series earlier this week, Australians can actually get the RX 480 cards cheaper from the US via Newegg. I got my power color card used for testing in this video for under $300 including $43 for shipping. It did take two weeks to get here but it works very well and the price was great. So in summary with the 6GB GTX 1060 and 8GB RX 480 neck and neck, I really don't know which way I'd go here. I guess it depends on how I felt on the day. As for the 4GB uh, RX 480 and 3GB 1060, I think the 4GB 480 gets the nod here. For now, I'll just keep benchmarking. I hope to add the RX 470 and RX 460 cards to the comparison, along with the GTX 1050 series, and of course the big boys in the 1070 and 1080. I might also add the Titan XP, I'll see how I go for time. So be sure to hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on that one. Well, if you made it this far, good job, and I hope to see you next time. Bye, guys.